at least 80 teachers, you know, who taught a lesson on the 1619 project while we have like Florida mandating that you have to say slavery is good now? Are we really going to be upset about this? <laughs> That's a fair point. Who cares? I didn't, know, I didn't know about that. Who the fuck cares? This is the U.S. intelligence agency, Mind Control. In the fall of 2019, the New York Times unveiled the 1619 Project, this kind of okay. special issue commemorating the 400th anniversary of the year African slaves were first brought to American shores. Mm -hmm. 1619 was the brainchild of star journalist and MacArthur genius Nicole Hannah-Jones. It claimed to be this daring deconstruction of America. This anniversary is the reason we even exist as a country. We would not be the United States were it not for slavery. You can look across. Mm, that's yeah, hard. I know that. uh, it's it's hard to say. Um, be, because now the thing is, is that <laughs> the slave triangle that existed. Um, at the end of the day, uh, like every colonial project fail. Every country that had a colonial project did not profit from it. Every country that got in front invested with the slave trade ended up not profiting from it. But their colonies that kept slavery, there was some continuation there as well. Now, the thing is, is that the whole idea beforehand was like feudalism. And that's how you got people to like work the land mm -hmm. and things like that. So it wasn't so much that it was like, hey, like the reason slaves exist are going to drive us to like col colonialize something. It was like an aspect of exploitation to incentivize like profits. Mm. And like even some people were like there for the adventure, you know, so, like the, the thing is, is that... Uh, the existence of America, and, and like you can look at this with the Alien and Sedition Act. Let me check real quick. You know what I'm thinking of? There's mm. okay, so Alien and Sedition is a different thing um, that was super fashy as well. Okay. You know, basically, cracked down on free speech. I'm thinking of the Chinese Exclusion Act. Ah, uh, okay. The law prohibited all immigration of Chinese laborers for 10 years. Mm -hmm. making exceptions for merchants, teachers, students, travelers, and diplomats, right? And this comes along with, like, the, the rail industry, right? So the, the thing is, is that this is something that I point to, that if the American state wasn't, wasn't in the place at the time, the Chinese refugee crisis of 1882 would have still existed. The Irish displacement, the Italian displacement, mm -hmm. you know, there's religious displacement, is that it's not just a country that's founded on the principle of slavery. It's also founded with the principle of refugees. So even if there was no colonial project, the mm. way it, the way it happened without slavery or, you know, the general genocide, and there was just, you know, like nice trade and like actually how they want to depict Thanksgiving, you know, if that still existed, there would still be end up in America's position to be kind of like the way it is now, where it's kind of like the land of refugees. And yeah. I think that's really key to America's identity. Not so much like uh, slavery. Slavery is part of it. Slavery is more of like those scars that yes. the state needs. Like, you, you know, like the fact that, you know, Stalinists still deny his genocides. The fact that mm -hmm. we can own what happened in America, but then also look at how these progressive systems and values still existed at the same time. There's like almost nobody who holds this opinion, but like the actual people who want to like send the white people back to Europe, you know, mm -hmm. that, that type of attitude. It's like, what about refugees? Yeah. Well, they don't matter because they're white. Like the most, the, the, the most people who came here did not come here out of colonization. Granted, no. it was already after colonization and the institution of slavery existed. But most people who have come to this country have been refugees. It's just a fact. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So, I mean, there are waves. I, I mean, think, it's the same. It's the same here. But at the at the same time, the whole point of the sixteen nineteen project is because you know how they try to say it's like we shouldn't even teach Black history. We should just teach history. <laughs> the thing is, is that we don't teach Native American history. We don't teach Black history in no, the history, and well, this should be. But taught. this is this this is program. historical revisionism. No, this <laughs> program is an antithesis. So the conclusion that comes out of a radical program like this is more acknowledgement of the crimes that happened in the foundation mm. of this country. Uh, the, but it, the, it is also stretched. And that's I guarantee that's what they're going to say, but they're going to say it yeah. and take it in a very, very wrong is way. It, like the 1619 our, Project. Our, oh, 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 right. myths. The, the 1619 Project is an embellishment of history. So, right. So, yeah. So is our. So is our national myth. It is, as as is. So what history, if it right? balances it out? What if it takes away the national myths and it takes away the embellishment, right? And the thing is, is also I want I want to be careful when I'm not when I'm throwing around words of like embellishment when it's even mm. on the topic of slavery. It's not about you know, slavery. I know. I know. But you always know somebody is going to be there. But then that's why I'm specifically saying the 1619 project is an embellishment it says that every part of america from the bottom to the top has benefited from slavery in every single way and sure. that and that slavery is the crux of the american identity they also is benefited from it. monarchy yes the, the, um, and the, it's the, the same it's the same shallow analysis as marxism the thing right is, the thing is is that the people who profited the most from slavery are still the people holding black people down today of course it is. i think that's a bigger deal than acknowledging i mean obvious because we've already acknowledged it you know i'm saying yeah. like to eat to so then also i'd like to see more on how this isn't an exclusive american thing and how it's not just like a scar in America, but a scar on the entire world, just like mm. the Holocaust is. Like that may yeah. have just taken ex place exclusively in Germany, but like, um, it's the it, fact like, that it was allowed to happen was yeah. The there's thing. like scars on these things, mm. you know, like, and that's and those still exist. And I mean, even like there is like versions of modern slavery today as well. Yeah, it's just not the same. And uh, the Carolinas, 100% of their economy was based on slavery. Mm. George Washington was afraid to leave it, release his slaves because he was scared that he would die of old age with no money. Mm. There was no idea that a government should take care of people. And, like, humanity even existed at that era. Yeah, yeah. Across all these aspects of modern-day society and see the legacy of slavery. Sugar, geography, uh -huh. capitalism. Why mm -hmm. there's so much traffic in Atlanta? All of this kind of goes. That also trail of tears. So, the sure traffic in Atlanta. Yeah. Well, I mean, Atlanta is trails of tears. Shit. Yeah. Sixteen. I, I'm actually so excited to see how incorrect they are. <laughs> it's like I, I think they're going to come to the correct correct conclusion that it is embellished, but they're going to come to it. I in just the don't most care that it's embellished. Way. You know. Yeah. It's not like it's actually being taught in school, and it's it's better than like no. hotep shit, you know. Yeah, yeah. But I don't think this. I don't think this does harm to society. No, unless it is taught in schools, then it's going to do the same harm that the regular embellished history is going to do, because it it still excludes other stuff, and this is why I say it's shallow, just like Marxism. Was a sensation. Well, I'm pretty sure she is a Marxist, so it makes sense. Driving record subscription numbers. It even got its own Super Bowl commercial. America was not yet America, but this they, was the moment it became. Jack, this they, had, history, they had, oh, it's this guy again. They had hmm. the track that they just went into where there was that hmm. lady speaking. While he was doing his voiceover, I was hearing something faint in the background. I was like, they have two tracks playing right now, right? So they faded into the track and it was already like playing. Like, mm. editing mistake, guys. He rests on a radical revision of America's birth year. Oh in the opening God. essay, Hannah Jones claimed that... Gee, I wonder. Okay, that's... I wonder. I wonder why the point of this is. Oh, it's yeah. a radical... You're crazy. Because they... It's like... Uh, it's... I think people want to reform Fred, Frederick Douglass, too. But, like, <laughs> Frederick Douglass, you know? He says... 
Like, what is 4th of July to me? Mm. What is 4th of July to me? What is 4th of July to a slave? Right? It's a, that's a fair point to make. This is, this is such an old ideology that mm. comes from Frederick Douglass, where mm -hmm. you can read, and they, and Prager, you like, uses this speech to fucking whitewash mm. him and shit. Like, he even argues that there is points, even though it's like, fuck these people for what they did to me, he still acknowledges the points of progressivism that came through in the period. He's... yeah. And that, that is what this doesn't do. But it's fine, because like I said, it's yeah. just an antithesis to, yeah, yeah, yeah. to yeah. the fucking Southern Revision and the, the Daughters yeah. of the Confederacy. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. There's yeah. a necessary binary that needs to happen anyway. And it's not like this well, took off. Yeah. These videos are all old. Yeah. I mean, it was pretty big at the time, and then it sort of fizzled out. Yeah, they started um, calling it a critical the, the... race theory. The 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 chuds, uh, their biggest problem with it is the revision of the of the founding year, as they just said, right? It, that's what they're mad about. But that's the point of it, though. Yeah, yeah. And that also, I, I don't also, also, guys, technically, seventeen seventy five. <laughs> just so we're clear. Technically, yeah. <laughs> technically, it's also <laughs> July second. I think. Not Downing July fourth had actually declared independence to protect slavery. We were founded not as a democracy, but as That's a slave democracy. True. Mm. That's partly true. But oh, yeah. not really. The main, the main thing, and this is why I'm saying that this needs to incorporate the native genocides with it. Yes. Because the, one of the main things, one, was representation in government and why do they want representation in government? Uh, various things, but one of those things being that the British government said you can't pass the Appalachian Mountains. So mm. there's all this land that they're just they're they need their grubby little hands on, you know? The Ohio campaign where like um God, I forgot his name. Anyway, the Ohio Valley campaign. And all these things where the expansion takes off that ends up you know, coattailing into the Civil War because the chase of, like, needing slave states through the expansion, mm. you know? It starts with expanding capital, and then they're like, oh, we need to expand political power. So, if you acknowledge that part of this coming from separating from Britain wasn't slavery, and also you should teach in there that, that Washington responded to the British saying that anyone who fights for the British will get freedom by also doing the same thing. And 10% of the Union's forces that fought for freedom were former slaves who then got fucked over and put back into slavery. They lied to them. They decided, no, we actually need you as slaves more. Everyone who fought for Britain was taken back to Britain, free ride, freed citizens of the UK. Hmm. So that's also needs to be in here. It needs, there needs to go. Yeah. Uh, okay. It's, it's, it, the rounding it out you can round it out with just like genocidal anti-us yeah. too yeah yeah but you, they might you, yeah. i haven't read it you know no but we'll, we'll say we'll say we should i should about. see like mr beats to see if he's done it or <laughs> someone like that someone who's an actual historian mm -hmm. history oh yeah teacher. your sixth grade history teacher was a propagandist washington yeah. and jefferson broke off from the british in order uh -huh. to protect the practice of brutal human bondage. So what's the evidence for this radical revision? The project was based on recent scholarship, which has dramatically deepened our understanding of this country's origins and our founding. Money. Thank you so much for inviting got, me to excuse me. This she had a profit motive, guys. A group yeah. of historians yeah. who really know their stuff. Gerald Horn is the Moore's professor of history at the University of Houston. <laughs> Uh oh, he's more. This is a book. It's they're going to lose their minds because he's a more about the states of America. It's certainly a great leap for white supremacy. So this is our sturdy scholarly source, huh? A central reason for the establishment of the United States of America was freedom, freedom to enslave Africans. <laughs> Professor Horn has some other opinions that might make one ever so slightly skeptical. Oh boy, this video is just going to be guys. Do you understand that black nationalism was in response to white nationalism? And even this Malcolm just... X went and tempered himself. This is just going to be a video 
of character assassination. That's my prediction. Uh-huh. Slaveocracy. Pull up his credibility. So you know Robert Mugabe, the brutal African dictator who routinely uh-huh. dispatched his North Korean trained goon squads to liquidate his political opponents? Uh-huh. Warren kind of has a soft spot for the guy. There has been this kind of distorted the okay. presentation uh, of what's going on in Zimbabwe. Of course, because you. of the Mugabe policies, there was a major turnaround. Or Fidel Castro, the Cuban autocrat who oversaw the mass imprisonment of undesirable political elements like, uh, you know, journalists and homosexuals. Oh, can you believe this guy wrote a book? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Somebody likes Castro wrote a book? <laughs> continues to permeate the discourse in the United States and also shapes the coverage of the tragic passing of Juan Fidel Castro. Or the Soviet Union, the one that weaponized famine to murder millions of Ukrainians. Horn has said that even its victims would consider the fall of the Soviet Union a geopolitical catastrophe. It was. So the great New York Times, with all of its prestige we, we and talk reach, about this so much. is we wandering don't get the into crank it. ravings of a fringe academic with a fetish for authoritarian terror. Like I told Thomas you. Sowell? I don't know who's going to get this real, huh? I told you. Like Thomas Sowell? <laughs> Their favorite. <laughs> I want to bondage has been a feature of virtually every civilization. Oh, here what? we go. Here we go. They're going to do the sla- Hey, slavery existed before the United States. It's not just a United States thing. What's Bro. the bet they're going to do white people with slaves too? No. Well, the thing is, is that they were in like, you know, the Slavic country and sh- you know, like shit like that like, in America. No. And like, when we're talking about America, like the, the, that's, that's what's so, that's so, you can't just focus on America. You need to focus on the triangle trade because like, mm-hmm. like the, the incentivization of like weaponizing people against each other to extract resources from Africa started with human beings. Mm. Like there's, there's so much, there's so much you can do with an, uh, this type of 1619 project attitude. And yeah. take it so much further into like real global understanding. Mm. But again, it's shallow. Yeah, which is fine. So is so is, so is, be. so is the fucking re- Confederacy fucking yeah. bullshit and all that stuff. Who cares? And also, this was never a Very thing. Possible color. 1619 mm. is only a thing because the right screeched about it. It was mm-hmm. never a main idea or anything like that. Yeah, it's like critical race theory is now. It's not a thing. Yeah. Nobody cares. Those 20 people delivered to the New World in 1619 were not, in fact, slaves. They, like the vast majority of white people coming here, were indentured servants. Oh my the bulk God. of African slaves and servants were funneled through a lucrative partnership between African elites and European merchants. Oh, come These on. These unlucky 20 were full human beings, just as conscious and alive as you or me. And their stories and their suffering... <sighs> Look, hang on. Pause, pause, pause. Go back, go back, go back, go back, go back. Okay, let it play. Unlucky 20 were full human beings. Pause. Just as conscious. Look at the picture he's talking about. The lucky 20 were full yeah. human beings. Look at the picture he's got on screen right uh, now. There's a lot of talking. white people with black people attached to a pole. <sighs> mm. they, were, they were just indentured servants, guys. That definitely doesn't mean slave. Fucking hell. Slavery apologia, too. And alive as you or me, and their stories and their suffering deserves to be told. Oh the founders were the first to build a country rejecting the ancient human hierarchies that most people in most also, places remember, have simply the, taken the, for granted. One of the main reasons that America happened was because British people need to season their food. The reason why British food is so bland is because the Ottomans controlled the spice trade. Like, it's even in our cuisine that you can draw the evidence of these things happening, too. What do you mean? What cuisine? Hot dogs? No, no, no. British British cuisine is bland. (laughs) Right? Yeah. 
like their whole occupation of India was just to make their food better. And like British Indian food is like American Chinese food, you know? Like it's it's the best part of British food. Is there like a white people version of Indian food? Mm. You know? Mm. So because of that, it drove it drove the people who wanted to get to the other side of the spices. Yeah. And then turns out there was like tons of fur and just animals that you could hunt here because like it's not like there was animals left in Europe. Yeah, let me go <laughs> hunt a fucking gazelle in Europe. That's where you go to hunt them, you know? I like, think probably wolves might be the only thing. Maybe if Europe, you go into maybe, maybe. Maybe. Um what else would be in Europe? Farmland Swallows, sheep. Sheep. Bird. <laughs> sheep, pig, farmland, you know. Um uh, I mean, wolves are wolves are more in Russia, and also like beavers are so easy to hunt, and mm. they yeah they they and like that's another thing is is that the beaver wars right? So the mm. beaver wars is like um, a campaign that you could you could easily if you wanted to be a fascist frame it as like the the natives genocided too, but it, it's it's more of like a dominance for for trade and hunting grounds. And the Iroquois took advantage of smallpox in the Algonquin people. So they were able to expand and have a great empire for a hundred years. And the Iroquois took slaves, but they did it um, in a way that if one of theirs died in battle, they would take one of the enemy tribe to bring with them. It wasn't mm -hmm. like the... My headphones just died. The southern mm -hmm. uh, slaves. So the first anti-slave... Hold on. I'm just going to keep talking. So... Mm -hmm. Then uh, those beaver wars were ecologically ruinous to North America. The, the trade from the beaver pelts then got more guns to do more war. And this is not uncommon with what they were doing with Africa. They were arming these African leaders with more weapons and incentivizing them to gain power for their own resource exploitation. Talking and I couldn't hear you because your mic wasn't in front of you. All right, let's 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 hear what else he has to say about slavery. In, in the history of human civilization, it takes place in Philadelphia. Key framers denounced slavery as an abhorrence, as barbarism. Yeah. Yeah, this was in defiance of Britain which didn't fully abolish slavery until nearly 60 years after the revolution. All men are created. When did America? We become acclimated to the majesty of that phrase. Stop, 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 stop. The Declaration of Independence is not relevant until after the Civil War, after the Emancipation Proclamation. It is added to the Bill of Rights by Lincoln to enshrine that slavery is abhorrent and needs to end. It, you don't get to fucking attribute that to the founders that all continued the practice of slavery. Even at this meeting, George Washington wrote in his will that he would free his slaves at the end of his life because of how much actual white guilt he had at the time. He didn't have the strength because he was a coward to free his slaves that day on the foundation of the country. They all knew it was wrong and continued to do so. And it didn't, it took until Lincoln for that to change. Britain was actually better than the United States in this regard, believe it or not. It's the one exception. Fucking revisionist. A radical <laughs> reimagining of human relations and the document it inspired empowered the freedom struggles to come. Whoa, 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 whoa. You can't be saying freedom struggles with that picture on the screen. Go back. Oh, here we go. He's gonna do friendly. This is torture too. Look at this picture. This is the Dixieland thing. Like, this is like, ah, uh, going down to Dixie, hooray! <laughs> That's this picture! You can't be showing this picture when talking about freedom, you fucking idiot! Okay, let's hear him ruin Frederick Douglass. Give me an aneurysm now. Inspired, empowered, the freedom struggles to come. Fuck off. Most of the conservatives who have uh, come out against the project, it's clear they haven't read a single word of it. They're not calling out the facts of it. They can't argue the facts. They just don't like what it's saying. That defense has not aged well. The 1619 project has been pummeled by professional historians okay. on the right and the left, including Gordon Wood, the grand Jedi master of American revolution scholars. 
You're going to be in here regurgitating Gordon Wood. It has the authority. <laughs> is, the woman, is the woman who wrote this a historian? No, she's Does a she journal. have a PhD? She's an activist and a journalist. Oh, so crazy. So you mean PhDs can then take a journalist work and be like, hey, this is like has tons of errors and stuff. Wow, crazy. Mm. Who gives a shit? <laughs> the New York Times behind it and yet could be so wrong in so many ways. The Times eventually offered up a fake correction. That just some of the founders wanted to protect Did he just tease me with the Frederick Douglass thing saying, hey, and it inspired future stuff? I think so. Uh, what is, hold on. Uh, what, 546 initiative. Yeah, he did. And now it's pumping this fake history into schools, turning the 1619 project into an educational curriculum. I gotta, Where? I, I gotta look up this guy's hand. In the country more than huh? Go ahead, keep playing. 80 cities, the educators were willing to tear up um, how they planned their curriculum to teach this. If there was any justice in this world, Bob Woodson would be at least as famous as Al Sharpton. He spent four decades pioneering. Are we going to really cry about 80 teachers? 80 teachers teaching the 1619 project when we're like There's literally. 80 cities. Oh, 80 cities? Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, at, mo at least 80 teachers, you know, who taught a lesson on the 1619 project while we have like Florida mandating that you have to say slavery is good now? Are we really going to be upset about <laughs> this? That's a fair point. Who cares? I didn't know, I didn't know about that. Who the okay. fuck cares? But you know what else? You know what else? Especially if this taught in urban schools that gets people who are disenfranchised by the school tax system more invested in their own education. If it inspires them, that's true. That, that's, that's better point that for the of. country and the world. Mm. You know what isn't Julian teaching Cruz that slavery is good. He founded 1776 specifically to counter the hip fatalism of the 1619 project. If he was really. If he was really somebody who wanted to counter it, he would found the 1775 initiative, all right? The <laughs> 19 postures is that all of the problems facing inner city Blacks are attributed to factors that are external to that community. Explain to me how institutional racism could cause Black people to fail in systems run by their own people. Tell me how that works. Nothing is more lethal to a people than to convey to them that it's impossible for them to be agents. He literally of their own said, fault. It's your fault. It's like, it's your fault. It's black people's own leadership that has failed them, not the United States. Yeah. Do you think that's that, some white savior shit? Look at this guy. Does this guy really think that there's not black conservatives? <laughs> like, no, I, I know, but you, you're missing what I'm, I'm saying is like this this attitude i feel like comes from people with that white savior complex that they need to be the ones that, to uplift them like if this was written by a white person <laughs> i think it would be a bit more egregious that would be funny it wouldn't it oh you, you mean the America. counter you specifically you're talking about the i was ta i was thinking of the 1619 project no, no, being funny 1619 to be written. project if it was okay. written by a white person. okay well i was thinking this guy's response would be really even uh. funnier if it, would if be, it yeah. was a white person. <laughs> well, that's why he's using a black dude. <laughs> You're missing it. But Baloney of... didn't miss it. She understands it perfectly. Baloney! Has exhibited, many of them, a level of resilience in the Bronzeville section of Chicago at a time uh -huh. of redlining in 1929. There okay. were 731 black-owned businesses. Blacks controlled $100 million in real estate assets. Did he say 1929? I think he said 1929. Give me a second. Oh, I said Bronzeville, Chicago, 19... No, I know. I'm saying the year. I'm pretty sure he said 1929. Yeah, Let, give me, uh, you can skip back. I know. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what he said. Um, 1929. What happened eight years uh, before 1929? The fall of Babylon? <laughs> um, it was in Oklahoma. The Oklahoma City bombing? In 1929, <laughs> it was uh, the Tulsa Race Massacre. So, I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. So, okay, one one city to prove your point. Okay, uh, an entire wealthy black community was burnt to the ground. Was that their fault? <laughs> I don't fucking think so.
when blacks were denied access to hotels. We built our own, the Wallahaji in Atlanta, the St. Charles. Oh my God, bro. You, okay, you're so, apologizing for segregation. Yeah, you know, so, so, so segregation. Now, this is a, this is a, uh, a point to be made is that during segregation, there was more black wealth being generated from inside their communities, which then led to Tulsa race massacres and shit like that anyway, right? Mm. So there is, this is where the whole notion of like support black businesses comes from, mm. right? Because when they were disenfranchised by the fucking segregation, the black codes, all this shit, when they were disenfranchised by that, they still, guess what? Pulled themselves up by the bootstraps. <laughs> They've been doing it the whole time, you see. But when you disenfranchise people like that, and then the fact that they were keeping their dollars circulated in their own economy, allowed for these boom economies in all black neighborhoods like Tulsa and black, yeah. you know, black Wall Street, all these things. That's, also, that's Tulsa. This Chicago, this Tulsa. time in Chicago, right? Guess what was going on? The Chicago Prohibition Mob Wars. I was gonna right? say, yeah. Guess, it's, guess it's, who? Guess who was doing that? White people. It literally was, wasn't it? It was the twenties, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Nineteen twenty 1920 to nineteen thirty three. And in Chicago, it's such a weird choice. Weird, weird choice. And just completely overlooking Tulsa. Completely overlooking that. I don't. I don't get it. What? Mm, okay. In Chicago. Kids in the inner city are inspired to improve their lives when you give them victories that are possible. There are two groups of people that I am sick and tired of. That Black is self-flagellating, <laughs> guilty white people and angry, rich Blacks. <laughs> what? I didn't like, I, I didn't like how he paused on saying Blacks at the end. It sounded like he wanted to say something else. <laughs> Uh, I do, uh, I, I do, I do like the self-flagellating white people pissing them off thing, though, because that's so funny. <laughs> it is funny.